Hi guys, this is Julia and since I did my guest video on Jennifer Maguire's blog, I know that a lot of you have gotten the Stabilo pens that I've featured there and some of you have had questions how to best use them, what the best technique is. And I want to show you with the Doodle Do stamp set by Paper Tray Ink. It's one of the stamp sets I've always wanted. I'm so happy I finally got it. And I'm going to be using also my VR Memory Keepers letterpress for stamp positioning. So I'm making sure that my card base will not move. So I'm going a little overboard here with the sticky notes, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. So I'm placing all the stamps that I want to use on um, uh, the paper, picking them up by closing the lid of the um, letterpress because they will just stick to it. It's like an acrylic block. Then I'm inking them up and I'm stamping. It's, that's as if you would use a regular acrylic block. Now the thing is, this is watercolor paper. Tim holds watercolor paper. So I'm fully expecting it not to stamp perfectly the first time because there's a lot of texture to this cardstock. So, and as you can see, the flower didn't quite stamp perfectly and also the sentiment didn't quite stamp perfectly. You can see it's splotchy here. Now you could just line up the stamps because they are clear stamps, but I suck at that. I'm really, really bad. So all I'm doing is I'm inking up the stamps again and closing the lid on my letterpress here because you can see it's perfect. It goes down absolutely perfectly. You can see it with the details on the flower and it's actually three or four passes that I did until it was perfect. So that's how you can use your letterpress as a stamp positioner. Here are all the colors that I'm going to be using today. And now I'm going to start coloring. I did a similar video of this technique previously. Um, and if I don't forget, I'll link to it. Otherwise, just check out my YouTube channel. I have a playlist for all the videos that I did with Stabilo markers. And the trick here is you might be used to work in, you know, like flicking motions from your Copic markers. So these are not Copic markers. They are more comparable to distress markers. Um, but you can use them without water, like I'm doing this today. And you're going to get extremely brilliant colors. You can see um, what I'm doing here. I'm starting out by putting down the darkest color first. That's this one right here, darkest color down first. And then immediately I go in with the next shade and I'm touching it to where the previous color ended. And then I'm blending it out using slight circular motions. And you can also see that I'm doing each side at a time because I feel that if you give these colors even just a little bit too much time to dry, it will be hard to blend them. That's why I'm uh, working in very small portions here and not in large portions. Um, another thing is that you shouldn't go over like the entire previously colored area because that might pull your paper. I've tried a gazillion different watercolor papers and I've had the problem on pretty much all of them. Maybe I'm too heavy handed, so just experiment. But my experiences only go over the edge of the previous color, not over the entire previous color with these markers. There was something else that I wanted to say, but I forgot. What, why did I forget that? Oh, I've sped things up. Look at that. I'm so incredibly fast in coloring. Huh. That's amazing. Uh, oh, yeah. That's another thing that I wanted to say. Um, don't necessarily end your previous color in a clean edge. You can see that my edges here are always like, um, like crazy rough. That's no straight line to them. Um, that will help you get a better blending. If you have a very straight edge when you stop coloring, um, it will be super difficult to blend this out. Oh, look here. I dropped the marker. I'm panicking. Can you see my hands shaking? I'm panicking. So, but these are water soluble. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just using a little bit of water um, on my brush, clean water and trying to pick this up. I can't get it out completely, but I'll fix that later on. And here's again, what I meant about this not straight edge. So you can see that I always end my coloring on a rough edge, a weird edge. And that makes it so much easier to blend because you don't have like a straight line that you somehow have to make disappear. Here are my pinks that I'm going in. Of course, if you only have a straight line, that's the only way you can color. But, you know, I guess you understand what I mean. And here I'm just basically going um, around the previous colors that I did, doing the same thing that you've already seen. 
and you know I find this actually quite relaxing. I, I usually uncap all my pens uh, immediately. They do not dry out. Stabile actually says you can leave them out for 24 hours uncapped, no harm will come to these pens and that's pretty much been my experience. You can uncap all of them because it makes it so much easier to work with them, to quickly switch between the colors, so don't worry about anything. Um, this is my card base here and I'm putting down some glue or adhesive with my ATG gun. Love my ATG gun! Best investment ever! Um, it's just it's just so handy and so easy to do and it's so cost efficient actually. And I have some pattern paper and I selected um, a soft color here that I'm putting on my card base and then on top of that I'm putting my colored piece here. This is my Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. And I'm not done yet, so I'm using liquid pearls. And please forgive the state of my fingers. My parents had sent me, um, is it gooseberries? Gooseberries. They grew gooseberries in their garden just for me. So best parents in the world. And they sent them to me. And I ate them in the dark when I, like, it was in the evening. I ate them in the dark while I was reading on my Kindle. And the next morning I'm looking at my fingers and they are completely brown and stained. It was totally horrible. So that those are just the remnants of that experience. But I don't mind. I got, you know, I got gooseberries from my parents. Anyhow, I used some liquid pearls to add dots and dimensions to the center of my flower because I just like the idea of having some raised dimension here and it's just absolutely beautiful. And this is still wet, so you have to be careful when you work around it. And somebody actually said that dots are now becoming my signature. So of course I couldn't help but add a few dots with my white gel pen into um, the colored uh, parts of the flower. And then I used different colors of liquid pearls around um, the flower and then also using my Stabilo pens to add some more dots. And you can see here the nice subtle dimension that you get. So that's the finished card for today featuring Stabilo pens and paper tray ink stamps. All the supplies are listed in the video description below. If you have questions, remarks or anything, leave me a comment, a thumbs up or go crazy and subscribe to my blog or to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon. Bye.